So in this video, we're going to talk about how pressure changes in any system uh, with a given depth. So the equation that we use is P of pressure equals rho G H. This is a rho, the Greek letter rho, rather than a P. Um, so what do each of these variables represent? Uh, well, it's really quite simple. Uh, this is obviously pressure. P is pressure. So let's write that. Pressure. Rho is density. Density. G is the gravitational constant. Gravity, which is, uh, for the purposes of the MCAT, is 10. And then H is the height. So, this is the equation that we use. Uh, let's do, let's, uh, let's conceptually, let's explain it. So, we have a container. And let's say you have a box in the container. Well, this box is obviously going to be under some kind of pressure. Uh, in general, everything is under pressure um, in normal situations. So, for example, we are uh, typically experiencing about one atmosphere of pressure due to the uh, the pressure of the atmosphere uh, pressing down on us. So, for example, if this box were outside of, we're not in any type of liquid, then it would be experiencing about one atmosphere of pressure, which is to say uh, the pressure of the atmosphere uh, above that box is uh, pushing down on it at all times, right? So that's about one atmosphere of pressure. Uh, now, when it's in a liquid, it's going to have more than one atmosphere of pressure. So let's say this is the liquid. It's kind of a bad drawing of a, uh, of a liquid. Um, and this is going to exert additional pressure on the object, right? So how much pressure is that? Well, we can calculate it with this equation, rho gh. Rho is the density of the liquid, density of the liquid. So typically, oftentimes it would be water. Um, G is a constant, a constant for the Earth, which is, uh, we usually say it's 10. And then H is the height of the liquid. So H is really the most, probably the most commonly changed variable here, um, which is the height of the liquid above the, the object. So in this case, let's say that the object is about 10, 10 meters down then uh, H would be 10. So now let's say we bring the object up to only about 5 meters down. Let's uh, say assume everything else is the same. Uh, well, now, the, uh, the, what's going to happen? The H is going to be 5 meters. So is pressure going to go up or going to go down? That's a, uh, conceptually speaking, um, we can answer this question both from a conceptual standpoint and from a mathematical standpoint. Uh, conceptually speaking, if you think about it conceptually, the, the column of water that's above the object uh, is smaller, right? It's about half of the, the, the size that it was before. So we would expect the pressure to, be, to decrease by half. And indeed, that's what happens mathematically when height is 5. Uh, so one, when one of these variables is uh, reduced by half, then the pressure uh, decreases by half as well. Um, so what are some practical applications of this that might help you remember it? Uh, one of the practical applications is have, uh, in terms of divers. So when divers, so when divers are, let's say this is a diver, um, and he's above the water, right? Let's say the water is right here. Uh, well, he's experiencing one atmosphere of pressure, right? Assuming he's at roughly at sea level, he'll be experiencing one atmosphere of pressure. And that's fairly typical. Uh, our bodies are very used to experiencing one atmosphere of pressure, so he doesn't notice the, the, the pressure. Really, our bodies notice change in pressure. They don't notice uh, a, a pressure, a constant, uh, unchanging pressure. What happens if he goes, dives down into the water? Well, if you've, even if you dive a little bit, if you've ever gone swimming, for example, and gone to the bottom of the pool, you'll feel, you'll feel your ears pop. And that's because the, your eardrums are reacting to the change in pressure. So even small changes in pressure are noticeable in your eardrums. That's also another reason, for example, why when you're in a plane uh, and the plane is taking off or it's landing, you might feel uh, a bit of a pressure in your eardrums. And what's happening is essentially your ears are uh, equalizing with the, uh, the change in pressure. Of course, airplane cabins are pressurized. Uh, otherwise, you would feel the, the change in pressure a lot more than, than you actually do. But even so, uh, you do feel a change in pressure. So anyway, um, 
those are relatively benign changes in pressure. You're not gonna you're not gonna die because you don't you dove to the bottom of the pool too quickly, um, and the, the the plane the plane taking off doesn't cause anything more than a little bit of discomfort in your ears. But if a diver goes down very deep into the ocean very quickly, then that's a very very vast change in pressure, and uh, the diver will feel that. And if the diver goes too quickly, the diver will 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 be killed by the effect, uh, by that very very rapid change in pressure. Uh, the diver could die. And the same thing going back up. That's why divers have to go very slowly. They have to, um, and they they have methods and they have procedures for figuring out how to do this. Uh, but they don't they don't dive down very quickly. They don't go up very quickly. And um, and the, the reason is because as you increase depth in a fluid, in a liquid, uh, the pressure increases. And as you go back up, the pressure decreases. And so this is an effect that divers are aware of, and an effect that we should be aware of for the purposes of the MCAT.